let's start so let me log into the v center first what we are discussing on the other day which topic we covered there is okay so we still have a small topic which we left with on the drs side we call it as sdrs storage distributed resource schedule let me see <coughs> vmware s d Let's see what it says. Storage DRS allow you to manage the aggregated resources of data store. When the storage DRS is enabled, it provides recommendations for virtual machine to disk placement and migration to balance the space and IO across the data stores within the data store cluster. Means, means what DRS will do? What is the purpose of DRS? Sunil? Uh, Vivek? Uh, resource uh, utilization uh, balancing. VMware DRS versus SD. Imagine I have a host in my lab. Okay, and I have one sand storage system in the bottom, and it has. three data stores okay and these are shared across all the host now if I am talking about DRS it will take care of these okay if I am talking about SDRS it will take care of these resources you getting my point? Yes. And this will be used to load balance CPU RAM. Okay. And this will be used for storage, but in two aspects. performance and utilization okay performance and utilization let's understand what it is so if you have one vm here and one vm So do you think all the three hosts are load balanced or not in this scenario, at least visually? Yes, it is uh, load balanced. Okay. All the three hosts are load balanced. Okay. Similarly, if I talk about data stores, I have to keep the resources like this. You're getting my point? Yes. Yes. In that case, in that case, what happens if this data store and this data store and this data store, all the three data stores are of similar capacity? So now I can say blindly, 
might be load balanced or might not be because the data size on each machine may, may vary. Okay, but in in visual in visuals, these are these are load balanced. Even in visuals, these are load balanced. Agree. But SDRS, what SDRS will do if you enable SDRS, sorry, if you want to enable the SDRS, first of all, you need to create a data store cluster. Data store. Okay, if you want to enable DRS, what you need? Prerequisite for DRS. HA. Prerequisite for DRS. Four things we discussed shared storage, V center, you need V center, you need a cluster, and you need a shared storage, you need proper network, and V motion must be enabled. These are the conditions, right? So you need to have a V center and you need to create a cluster. Similarly, if I want to enable SDRS, okay, individual data stores, I cannot enable SDRS. Okay, I need to create a single cluster out of it. Cluster is logical collection of data stores. Okay, normally, normally VMware cluster is logical collection of host. VMware storage cluster is logical collection of data stores. As simple as that. Okay, how to create a cluster? I have already shown you in some of the previous sessions when we are discussing about the storage. Let's go ahead and create the cluster quickly. So go to data stores, data stores, right click, storage, storage, new data store cluster. New data store cluster, please do not turn on storage DRS. Just create a cluster, empty cluster. And This is the host cluster, okay? It has it has this much CPU and this much RAM, okay? Means how many how many clusters? How many clusters that this newly created data store cluster can attach to? You can have multiple clusters, right, on the host side. Okay, next. select all the data stores if you, even if you want you can select or show all data stores these are not these are not part of the cluster because you cannot create the local data stores into a cluster that will not work okay so create a cluster it's not recommended to have the local data stores for creating a cluster okay select the storage and finish now you see all the all the data stores are moved moved into cluster okay now if i want to deploy the virtual machine ha and drs both are enabled and i am trying to deploy a new virtual machine deploy for view template from local file okay i have a tiny linux What is the VM name? VM 10. And I'll put it on cluster. Okay. Next. Next. Let's wait. So you see. The capacity recommendations and it has it is asking for it is asking for which data store which data store remember I have created a cluster but still it is asking for which data store you want to keep the resources I'll say 10 and VLAN 10 is fine now it's okay I don't want to touch that okay if you observe if you observe I'll power on. I'll simply. Yeah. Still, it is deploying, man. 
just a hold just a moment Okay, let me try clone this machine. Clone this machine, the machine which is already running. VM10, where you want to place? I'll place it in a cluster. Where you want to place? Power on, it will power on. Then let me clone, let me clone one more thing before that. Let me check something. Okay, let me clone one more, one more. <clears throat> Eleven. Next. Now it is asking for cluster. If you observe, and it is asking for storage. I have deployed two VMs now. The second machine is now deploying. Now, if you go to cluster, go to VMs. Okay, and sort the name. Let's see, ten and eleven. Okay, let me pour on the eleven. You see, 10 is deployed in host 3, 11 is deployed in host 1. If you observe, deployed in host 1 and 10 is deployed in host 3. If I deploy one more machine, it should power on in 2. two. Let's see. Let me clone one more machine. Here it is. Clone one more machine. And I'm not specifying anything, I'm simply saying use this cluster. That's it. Everything is managed by host itself. Let's see. This data store is having some issue. That is why is not allowing me to do that it's okay let me clone one more machine 10 12 i'll put it on a different data store cluster put it on 30 already 9 is 9 is provision that is the reason okay 12 i'll simply power on once I have power on, it it should go and start in. It should go and start in host number two. That is my expectation. Let's see. VM twelve. VM twelve. Oh, it is also started in host three for some reason. Okay, let me create one more thing. One must go on two. <clears throat> if I keep on increasing the load, any. The host will load balance the load load right. We are, we are not we are not even deciding on which on which host you want to deploy. The background uh, DRS rules are there. Yeah, background fully automated DRS is there. So whenever you power on, it should decide where I should go and deploy, right? So that is the okay. reason why that is the reason why it is restarting. Let's power on. Now at least this should go in a different host. Let's see. Yeah. So go to cluster 13. 13, you see, now it is on 12.
Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just I'm just seeking something. So what I'm what I'm trying to find out if you look at if you look at learn 10 you have three VMs running on it. If you look at learn 30 you have four VMs. If you look at learn 20 you have six VMs, right? Now when I'm trying to deploy any virtual machine it is not asking for any host because DRS is enabled. So similarly if you create a cluster and enable the storage DRS, it will not ask for any data store. Let's see how it works. Okay, so let me go to data store cluster. Configure, configure, go to data store cluster, configure, enable storage DRS, turn on vSpace storage DRS, space balance automation and IO automation rule enforcement you can create the rules and policy and vm evacuation everything is fully automated fully automated fully automated fully automated fully automated or else actually fully automated is set at top level but if you want something you, you don't want to run you don't want to run something okay policy enforcement manual so it will not consider this as a option to run this feature okay so you can set it to manual okay so i'll, I'll set everything to full runtime settings runtime settings io metric inclusion select this option if you want io metric considered as part of the any sdrs recommendations or automated migrations in the data store cluster means if it is trying to calculate which host utilizing more, which host, which host is utilizing less, and what is the IO, IO metrics for. IO metrics means if one VM is trying to read data from data store, how much time it is taking. Another VM is trying to read data from another data store, how much time it is taking. So one machine is responding faster, another machine will be responding slow. Means the second machine having some issue on the data store maybe the data store is performing a little slow because more number of vms deployed on that particular data store so those parameters it will capture and it will use for the, what we call it as automatic S sv motion this you call it as sv motion migrating vms from one data store to another data store the live machines migration from one data store to another data store you call it as sv motion Okay, now space threshold run. Save it as default value and I will latency even if it is five milliseconds. Try try to calculate it. Okay, if you have some advanced options. Default VM affinity keep VM DK first together by default. Check imbalances every and more aggressive minimum space utilization difference five percent. Okay, if one data store is one TB, another data store is one TB. Both the utilizations are five percent mismatch. Then try to calculate it if, if the space utilization difference is less than five percent it's okay no need to worry that's the calculation okay just click okay okay so sdrs has been configured and we can set some of the rules and we can define alarms Can define alarms add you can add alarm what it will do it will trigger the alarm and you can define a schedule task even here and you can create some rules sdrs rules okay sdrs rule rule one rule one 
एंटी एफिनिटी वीएमडी के एंटी एफिनिटी बाई दिस पैटर्न ओके लेट्स सी लेट्स सी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स टेस्ट द डीआरएस व्हेदर इट इज वर्किंग और नॉट नाउ इफ आई क्लोन वन मोर वर्चुअल मशीन 13 इज डन राइट लेट्स क्लोन द 14th वर्चुअल मशीन इट शुड नॉट आस्क फॉर स्टोरेज इवन क्लोन वर्चुअल मशीन वीएम 14th नेक्स्ट selected the cluster if you want you can expand and select the individual host doesn't matter but i'll simply select the cluster i will not specify any host cluster will take care because drs is enabled now you see there's nothing i'll select the storage cluster the data stores are gone now individual data stores are not showing they'll leave over the local ones okay so the cluster data stores are gone and you can select the cluster that's it now it is placing the as per recommendation it is placing in 30 finish and log on So, clone one more machine, VM15, select the host and select the data store cluster. See, automatically the recommendation is it is placing in 20. Right? We are not selecting anything. System is doing automatically for you this time. If you enable DFS, placement on a specific host system will take care if it is fully automated DRS system will take care you don't need to worry about where you want to go and start it what is the advantage of this okay the advantage is you got a VM deployment request for 10 virtual machines okay before you deploy these 10 virtual machines if a DRS is not enabled you have to sit and calculate how many hosts I have 25 host in out of 25 host what is the utilization okay this is the utilization and out of 10 vms i have i have a 10 vms right out of 10 vms one big one big vm is there one big vm in a sense 64 gb memory is required for that particular virtual machine where should i go and place this vm okay first identify the free space in existing cluster i have a 25 host okay none of the hosts are having 65 65 gb or 64 gb memory free so what you will do you will manually move here and there you will manually move some of the machines from one host to another host and you free up something then you start deploying the machine that is how it works right manual work okay so if you want to avoid all those things sdrs will help you out on uh, sorry drs will help you out so similarly you have a 10 data stores okay every time when you are deploying a machine you are just checking how you are checking simply go to before before you deploy something simply go to data stores okay now okay this is 16 gb free this is 160 gb imagine this is these are two tb machines so two tb data stores 160 gb free 120 gb free 120 gb free now where should i deploy let's use this Let's deploy the machine here after deploying one machine if there is any new request you again come back and see okay out of 10 data stores which is having more free space let's select that and deploy it these are the things that you do in a day-to-day -day. so if you create a cluster you no need to worry about space management system will automatically take care of it you understand what i'm saying okay so for example if two six and seven six and seven are having some dependency okay let's say do you recollect the windows failover cluster logic i have two machines okay and i have created a cluster right i have created a cluster machine one and machine two primary secondary what kind of rule that we set on DRS? Hello. Vivek. 
windows failover cluster trs rule what kind of rule what we set anti affinity rule keep the virtual machines separate machine 1 must be running on this machine 2 must be running on this these two machines should never come to one single host you remember the rule yes yes please acknowledge okay so that rule is already applied in drs but in the backend storage in the backend storage you placed both the virtual machines on single data store you understood what i'm trying to explain at the front end at the front end you are saying okay i applied a anti affinity rule anti affinity says always separate these two machine okay at host level it's fine but in the data store level you kept both the vms on a single data store then what's the use if the data store is gone your both the vms are gone it is one single data store so how to make sure how to avoid single point of failure single point of failure means one simple data store is gone your entire business application is down which shouldn't happen so what you have to do you have to write a rule saying these two machines must be running on two different data stores one one machine is here one machine is here so that if in the backend data disk if one disk goes bad it's still fine no problem if this data store will go offline this is still there so this machine will run you understood yes how to set this rule go back to the portal go back to the portal let's select machine 6 and machine 7 are the two machines which are sitting on the same data store called run 10 i want to apply a rule imagine these two are a cluster machine so how to apply the rule go to data store cluster configure rules add a rule windows cluster rule 1 vm anti affinity vm anti affinity means separate the virtual machines okay that's it rule is applied after some time okay let's go to Early ones or daily ones, weekly ones, when you want to run once and eight AM. Right? I have scheduled it for once. Normally you have to schedule it for for daily once or daily and weekly once or something okay let's see after i have scheduled it for once Okay, so let's see what it says. Monitor. Fifteen machines. Say storage DRS recommendation acknowledge let's see 
if it works because I have a one rule, right? It should execute. Six and seven. It is gone. Seven is already gone. Seven is went to somewhere else. Not here. Okay. Seven is came to here. Now I will set one more role. Seven and eight, they should never stay together. What you have to do? Go to configure roles. Rule number two. Seven and eight, they are staying in 20. Okay. That's it. So 20. Seven and eight. So it should it should move one of the data one of the uh, virtual machine from data store to another data store. Let's see. It is running six here. Let's see. Seven. It came to here, and eight staying here these kind of rules also you can set okay it's, it is not visible here it is it is running in the back end it is not showing the entries like sv motion migrating vm from one one data store to another data store which is not showing up here okay understood this is this is how you can set the rule if you want 13 and 15 they are staying in the same data store right you can set one more rule you, you can keep them in a different Host, oh, sorry, different data store. So rule 3, 13 and 15, 13 and 15. Both are running on 20 now. Okay, just click OK. Okay, that's it. 20, if you go to 20, 13 and 15 are there. Just refresh, okay. one should go away. Out of those two, one should go away. So 13 is moving ahead, I guess. Yeah, 14 is still here. 13 is moving to here. Okay, it's still not moving. Let me power on this machine. Okay, let me go to data store. 13 and 15. Rule is same, right? 13 and 15. Yes. Still it is. Refresh. 15 is gone. 15 is gone to here. You see? That is how you can do the load balancing and rules also. But it will not run every every five minutes, just like your DRS. You have to schedule it. Go to schedule DRS. Weekly, so keep a schedule and put an email. Then next, that's it. So schedule task. You have daily task. You have which I task. Understood? Yes. This is how you can co configure and manage storage operations. You can say automatic 
deployments and automatic load balancing of storage resources within the VMware cluster. And so far what we discussed, we discussed about DRS, how it works, how to automate and how to apply the rules and what is DPM and what is predictive DRS and proactive HA, how it is integrated with the DRS and SDRS, how you can create a cluster and how you can apply the rules and how you can define the anti affinity rules you can you can there is one more rule but that's a, that's a bit tricky let me show you rules vmdk anti affinity vmdk anti affinity means select a rule okay rule one browse browse you have one virtual machine called vm1 okay so it has two hard disk machine has a two different hard disk so if you want to keep those two hard disk in a different different data store then you can apply anti-affinity rule you're getting my point yes oh, sir yes yeah. if your virtual machine is having three different hard drives or three different vmdk files so if you want to keep them in a separate Source, then you can apply this VMDK anti affinity. VMDK anti affinity okay. will make sure within a virtual machine multiple VMDKs are there, but you want to keep them in a different data stores because VMDK1, VMDK2 both are having the same data. There is an application called SQL, and VMDK1 and VMDK2, D and E, both the drives are configured with application. So if one drive goes wrong, still okay, application will run. If you have such kind of configurations, what you can do, you can keep the VMDK files in a two different data stores. Even if one data store goes wrong, it's okay. Still your application will keep on functioning. Understood? Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, in that situation, you will use it. Right? So with this, with this, yeah. I will stop HA and DRS concepts. What I will do? simply power off okay i'll simply power off everything simply delete all the views okay why because we we have to test the ft right Fault tolerance. We have to test the FT. That we will do it tomorrow. So what I did, what I did, just let me minimize this. Downloads. I got the Ubuntu. Okay. I got the Ubuntu. Okay, let me stop recording. I got the Ubuntu. What I will do? I will try to deploy this Ubuntu here. Then we'll see what we can do. Okay? Okay. Okay, let me stop this video. I will catch up tomorrow. Let me stop the recording first.